Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionellus, where medicine makes perfect sense, and today we continue our bleeding and coagulation playlist, and we'll talk about Haemophilia C, where we have a problem with factor 9. So let's get started. But before we get started, please do not forget that Haemophilia C is the only Haemophilia that's not X-linked recessive. Indeed, it is autosomal recessive. The problem in hemophilia is with step number three, the coagulation, specifically the secondary hemostasis. And if you're talking hemophilia A, the problem is with factor eight. Hemophilia B, the problem is factor nine. Hemophilia C, which is today's topic, the problem is factor 11. A and B are X-linked recessive, but C is autosomal recessive. Here is hemophilia, the problem is with secondary hemostasis. PT will be normal because the extrinsic pathway is normal, but PTT will be prolonged because the intrinsic pathway is having a problem. This is primary hemostasis and we don't care about this right now. We used to care about when we talked about von Willebrand disease, but not with hemophilia. Here is secondary hemostasis. The problem with hemophilia is in the intrinsic pathway. If it's hemophilia A, we have problem with factor 8. If it's hemophilia B, we have problem with factor 9. If it's hemophilia C, we have a problem with factor 11. And there is a mnemonic to remember this, hemophilia A, the problem is with factor 8, and then B, factor 9, and then C with factor, don't say 10, please say 11. 10 is here, baby. Coagulation factor number, name, and syndrome. This is factor 8, the anti-hemophilic factor, problem, hemophilia A, or the classic hemophilia. How about Christmas factor, factor 9, this is hemophilia B, or Christmas disease. How about hemophilia C, the problem here with factor 11, the plasma, thromoplastin, and decedent, and hemophilia C is known as Rosenthal syndrome. Oh, and we have a pharmacology marathon on Facebook, please join us. The problem with hemophilia is here. So, expect joint bleeding, muscle bleeding, brain bleeding, retroperitoneal bleeding, late re-bleeding, and bleeding after surgery or tooth extraction because the platelet plug is not enough. And these are the clinical symptoms of hemophilia. Hemophilia A is an X-linked recessive disease. The problem is with factor eight. Could be a deficiency, could be an inhibitor slash antibody. Hemophilia B is Christmas disease. Is an X-linked recessive disease. The problem is with factor nine. Hemophilia C or Rosenthal syndrome. This is autosomal recessive. And therefore the problem here is factor 11. Please don't forget X-linked recessive, Boys, Otuzama recessive consanguinity. You can get a 25% discount towards my antibiotics course. This is available for 12 students only. Use the promo code antibiotics25 at medicosisperfectionalis.com. Here is Otuzama recessive disease. Carrier and a carrier. They marry and then they have children. Big A, big A, normal. Big A, small A, carrier. Big A, small A, carrier. Small A, small A, a disease. So, out of the offsprings, you have 25% normal, 50% carriers, and 25% they have the stinking autosomal recessive disease. Whenever I say the word autosomal recessive, the next thing that should come up in your mind is consanguinity. And the third thing that should come up in your mind is a certain group or population, because it's consanguinity. Autosomal recessive consanguinity, let me explain. Cystic fibrosis, probably the patient is European. Alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, again, it's most prevalent in Europeans. How about hereditary hemochromatosis, Northern Europeans, alpha thalassemia, Africa, Mediterranean, and Southeast Asia, familial Mediterranean fever, it's called Mediterranean, this is the Mediterranean, and it includes Arabs, Sephardic Jews, and Miserace Jews, but Tay-Sachs, Neiman, Pig, Fanconi, Neiman, Hemophilia C, this is Ashkenazi Jews, Eastern European Jews. But why can't I just lump them together as the Jews? Because there are Jews in the United States, there are Jews in Canada, there are Jews in Australia, there are Jews in Europe, there are Jews in the Middle East, there are Jews in Ethiopia. How is this consanguinity? Of course you need to be specific, baby. Next, beta thalassemia, Mediterranean, Northern Africa, Southern Europe, sickle cell disease, Sub-Saharan Africa, Friedrich's ataxia, Western Europe, Albinism, Zimbabwe, Native American, Kuna, Zuni, and Hopi nations, Japan, and, I cannot pronounce this, Yukiro Island. Please pay attention. This is true as of this moment. If you're watching this video 300 years from now, this is probably gonna change. Your change of genes, change of migration patterns, change of intergroup marriage rates. So this is not etched in stone. 
But hey, Medicosis, why should I learn all of this? If you wanna be a mediocre doctor, then do not learn them. But if you wanna be the best, if you wanna be the next house MD, of course you should know everything. Not for you, but for your patient's sake. For instance, imagine that you are a doctor in Egypt and a three-year-old Norwegian kid came to your office with his parents and they say, doctor, he's coughing thick copious amounts of pus. Every day we have to switch him into many different body positions to get the pus out of his lungs and we have to repeat this twice or thrice a day. His putum is green sometimes and there is stateria, which means the stool floats on the surface of the water in the toilet. So what's the diagnosis, doctor? If you do not know this, you'll say, oh, maybe he has tuberculosis. Why would a three-year-old rich kid from Norway have tuberculosis? What are you smoking, doctor? This is a classic case of cystic fibrosis. I've told you, Norway, you need to learn this. Let me give you another example. Imagine that you are a doctor in Russia and a kid came from the Republic of Congo to visit your clinic. The kid is complaining of hemolysis, jaundice, hepatosplenomegaly, and some skeletal changes on x-ray. There is dactylitis, acute chest syndrome, pulmonary hypertension, osteomyelitis, renal papillary necrosis, chronic abdominal pain, otosplenectomy, splenic sequestration, aplastic crisis with the freaking parvo B19 virus, recurrent leg ulcers, proliferative retinopathy, and even strokes. If you do not know this, you'll say, oh, maybe it's a hemoglobin C disease. You're woke. This is a classic case of sickle cell disease. It's called hemoglobin S, baby. Get your head out of your S sphincter. You need to learn this, not for your sake, but for your patient's sake. Please pay attention. Saying that Tay-Sachs disease is commoner in Eastern European Jews is correct. But saying that most genetic diseases happen in Jews is absolutely wrong. There are more than 6,000 genetic diseases out there. Moreover, the Jewish population is less than 25 million all over the world. Out of 7.8 billion. So that's less than 1%. Saying that most genetic diseases happen in less than 1% of the world population is statistically insane. Okay, Medicosis, I just want to understand everything. Uh, why so many diseases in the Ashkenazi Jews as opposed to the Sephardic Jews? That's actually a good question and there is an answer to this. But I cannot tell you the answer here. It will take me like five videos. And the answer is not in medicine, it's in history. If you want to know the answer, you can read the book called Ethnic America by Dr. Thomas Sowell, chapter four. It will take you like two hours just to read chapter four. But by the middle of the chapter, you will say, aha, oh, that makes sense. Holy guacamole. But I still don't get a medicosis. I thought that consanguinity was just like an urban myth living inside the ancient heads of doctors. Hey, Jeffrey, if you bother to check, there is an invention called the library. If you go there, bring you something called a textbook. I know it's not in vogue as of this moment. Get you a genetics textbook. You know, the one that comes in two volumes because they cannot just lump them in one. It's so, so huge. Open the chapter on autosomal recessive disease and you will see this genetic pedigree. Here is patients and uh, of course we'll see what's happening here. To make it more interesting, let's add some names. So, Jimmy married Sarah. Okay, Jimmy is a carrier for an autosomal recessive disease. Sarah is perfectly normal. Okay, and they gave birth to Emily and Aladdin. Emily got married to Jack and Aladdin got married to Esmeralda. Oh, was it Aladdin and Jasmine? I don't know, Rick. I did not watch cartoons in my childhood. My dad made me read Robin's Pathology. It paid off on the long run. Anyways, Jack and Emily got married and they got Romeo. Romeo then married Juliet. Juliet is from the same family. If you go back to the ancestor. Oh, so this is like cousin marriage. Oh, yep, consanguinity. Absolutely. Juliet and Romeo. And they gave birth to four beautiful kids. Here is Josh. Oh, I'm sorry, it should be a girl. Okay, let's call her Karen. Karen, Jeff, Jerry, and Judy. Jeff and Jerry are carriers to the same autosomal recessive disease. Karen is perfectly normal, and Judy has the autosomal recessive disease. And that's why consanguinity. So it's not an urban myth, it's a freaking fact. But now I'm so depressed, Medicosis. You're telling me not to marry my cousin. Dude, that's not my job. You can marry whomever you want to marry. 
I'm here to tell you pathological facts, period. Hemophilia C, Christmas disease, etiology, congenital, it's inherited, it's hereditary, autosomal recessive disease. Epidemiology, autosomal recessive, therefore consanguinity, therefore which group, which population? Eastern European Jews, the Ashkenazi Jewish population. Pathophysiology, there is problem with factor 11. Clinically, anatomical or deep bleeding. Diagnosis, very similar to hemophilia A and hemophilia B, just change the number of the factor. Instead of factor 8 or 9, this is factor 11. Treatment, if the patient likes factor 11, give the patient factor 11. If there is an inhibitor, give factor 11A, A for active. Myths of hemophilia. Only males can develop hemophilia A. Not true. We have established that female can in certain situations. Please watch my previous videos. All hemophilia are X-linked recessive. No, hemophilia C is autosomal recessive. All female carriers are asymptomatic. Nope. Some female carriers have mild symptoms. All hemophilias are equally horrible. No, hemophilia A is usually the worst on average. For two reasons. Number one, it's the most common hemophilia. Number two, most hemophilia A patients have severe disease. This is not the case with hemophilia B or C. All X-linked diseases are X-linked recessive. No, there is something called X-linked dominant, such as what? Do you have examples? Let me know the answer in the comment section. Hemophilia C affects males more than females. No, hemophilia C is autosomal recessive. It's not X-linked recessive. If I have hemophilia, my platelet count, normal. How about bleeding time? Also normal. How about PT? Normal because the extrinsic pathway is normal. How about PTT? Prolonged because the intrinsic pathway has a problem. Hemophilia pycmonic. Hemophilia, this is Heyman file. It's a genetic mutation. Here is genes and they are mutant. Prolonged bleeding. There is also some pain. And there is heme arthrosis. Heme rosis. How do we manage it? Clotting factor replacement therapy, desmopressin, because desmopressin can help express von Willebrand factor, which will help factor 8. This is especially true for hemophilia A, but this is not true for B or C. Antifibrinolytic therapy and analgesics. How about consideration? You should consider genetic counseling and please try to avoid injury. This was from Picmonic. Go to picmonic.com slash VIP hookup slash medicosis. I really love them when it comes to genetic diseases, pharmacology, and microbiology. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to get my antibiotic scores. Go to Picmonic to enjoy learning medicine. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.